Welcome to the 2021 Economic Depression and Preparation Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this weekend edition, July 17, 2021. Well, the economy is opening back up for the most part in a lot of these different states. And it's too bad that some people's brains are not opening up, but <laughs> I'm just teasing. But the economy is opening back up and there is a somewhat of a recovery going on. Uh, and that is something to be thankful for. Um, and we are blessed to still be here. Please be sure to subscribe um, for the latest 100% pure financial news for everyone in America and sometimes those of us beyond America as well. So today I want to get right into it. I want to talk to you briefly about the Fed's balance sheet expected to top $9 trillion um, after it starts reducing its monthly asset purchases. So we're going from $900 billion to $9 trillion over 13 years and over two major crises. That was the financial crisis of 2008 and the other crisis of 2010, the recession of 2010 and 2012. So from $900 billion to $9 trillion, that's a lot of money that the Federal Reserve has on their balance sheet that they have to um, unload or try to unwind eventually. And it's only going to get worse throughout the remainder of this year into next year because, like I said, they have to pay for the infrastructure bill, the American Family Rescues Plan, and other help, the other bailout help that's still coming for the retail, auto, airline, hospitality, and, re and transportation industries um, that all need to be bailed out. Uh, like I said, the good news is we have time to prepare. Um, average Americans, we have time to prepare, to prep, and to get ready for different black swan events that may occur between now and in the midterms 2022 and 2023 uh and what i mean by black swan it could be like you know rolling blackouts uh droughts climate change or it could be something related to cyber attacks again on, on a different part of the economy or and also the lockdown 2.0 that a lot of people are talking about besides me um we believe that we're going to be going into another lockdown a shutdown if you know, even if it's uh you know make believe or manufacture it based on the delta variant or some other kind of variant um it's still going to be a lockdown that's going to have an impact on the um u.s economy a negative impact so two recessions equal a depression remember that we're going to be into the next recession here once all of this stimulus money the last hurrah of stimulus money um falls through and notice a lot of people are taking trips to vegas and other places and uh they're showing pools on the party pool parties and different things on instagram and facebook that's great you know enjoy it you know it's kind of like the last hurrah uh the last two hurrahs you know before things shut down again so yeah go out um but be safe you know always you know mask up even if you've been vaccinated because you could still be a super spreader or a spreader of this thing um pandemic if you know like i said if you believe in that um so still be safe and take the necessary precautions. I always advocate that, you know, wherever we go, security first, safety first, and then the necessary precautions. You want to have food, water, medicine, um, and, 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 and those needs for two weeks to a month supply minimum during these times that we're living in right now. And always there's a chance that, you know, we could not be prepared. There could be a black swan event. And this is what the Federal Reserve is going to deal with. They have a $9 trillion balance sheet. Inflation is headed to 10% by the end of the year. And they've already said that um, the banks were under a stress tech. They're part a stress test by the Federal Reserve Bank. Banks and others have parked nearly one trillion dollars in cash overnight at the Federal Reserve's repo facility, with overnight demand dipping back to a still seven hundred and seventy-seven billion, seven hundred seventy-six billion on Monday. Uh, and so um, there's still a lot of, according to Reeling, um, he said there's still a lot of excess cash in the system. Well, all that's going to come to an end by next year. Uh, the end of, end of this year and the next year. And the other thing I want to talk about too is the U.S. became the world's new Bitcoin mining hub. A lot of people have been knocking cryptos and Bitcoin, but the U.S. is the second biggest mining destination on the planet, accounting for nearly 17% of world's Bitcoin miners. Um, You know, China, and I told you earlier that China banned Bitcoin, but this is proof that a lot of countries and a lot of citizens of the United States, people here, us, we're trying to get off the dollar, trying to find ways because we know the dollar is losing value. Um, and so Bitcoin will never go to zero, just like gold and silver will never go to zero. Um, but at the end of the day, we know it is somewhat manipulated by the powers that be. Everything is manipulated. But the, the, the key thing is here is you want to be diversified because the U.S., it's fast becoming the new Bitcoin hub or center of hub of Bitcoin activity. And remember, Bitcoin includes so many different coins. You got stable coins, you got Dogecoin, you got Ethereum's, Litecoins, all kind of coins um, that's going to be making their uh, their debut. So 
it is although i don't you know i'm not a big advocate of a crypto space i do think there is a place for crypto in the new economy um especially since it's digital until the fed coin comes out with a digital coin um the block bitcoin and everything bitcoin is still a viable product and it you know will be for the next three or four or five years here to come and so i encourage you to encourage you to look into that either through coinbase.com or through another trader um and just you know not when i tell you to throw the whole farm at this kind of stuff no way um you know when i tell you to bet i'm not telling you to do all that i'm not a financial advisor but i'm just saying that cryptocurrency is here to stay um they've been saying the news has been saying others been saying oh it's gonna go to zero well they've been saying that for the last 10 to 12 years and it has not and um it's a digital currency or not a currency it's a digital means of exchange it's not really a currency because it's too volatile to be a currency but it has outperformed gold and silver in the last uh two to three years in terms of profit gain return on investment gain um and so that's something to look at that's all i'm saying now um regardless of that we must be prepared for this economy to change and i encourage everyone to monitor um, not just the pension, the 401k, but also to monitor the stocks in the bond market because right now the 10 year yield is around 1.3%. If that continues to fall, that means after we have this hyperinflation of this year and next year, we're going into massive deflation come late 22 into 2023. And that's going to spell trouble for the U.S. economy and for the global economy because if we go from hyperinflation to massive deflation, that means that we've got um, two. Uh, many goods and services chasing too few dollars okay there's going to be a liquidity prices in both the individual and in the banks and everywhere because people won't be able to get access to real hard cash or to spend real hard cash anywhere because there'll be a deflationary crisis and that what caused that is what caused the 1929 depression that lasted for uh 15 years almost and so we're going into another one of those cycles just be prepared for that as well. So this has been the report for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm trying to cut it short because I don't want too many um, advertisements to break up the message. So let me know what you think about it. And I'll definitely see you in the next video. Thank you.